Greetings. Please choose a seat. And eventually allow your body to settle into a comfortable stillness. If you're sitting on the floor, a cushion below your seat can elevate your hips higher than your knees, ideal for a good circulation, as well as a blanket underneath the ankles can reduce the discomfort that comes from sitting still. While you're meditating, your eyes can be open or closed, but it's best for your eyes to remain still as well. The back is also best self-supported, upright, and relaxed, so it can move with the subtleties of the breath. And the shoulders should not be lifted too high or too far back, too far forward or down, but right in the middle of the range of motion so you get good circulation all the way down to your fingers. Similarly, your neck ideally is relaxed. Your head should not be tilted forward or back or to the sides, but hovering right above your heart. And the jaw can soften the lower row of teeth separated from the upper row of teeth with your tongue resting right behind the upper two front teeth where the roof and the teeth meet. This is called the eight-point posture of Vairochana, which is ideal for any meditation technique. First, we're going to start with Anapana Smriti, mindfulness of inhaling and exhaling. For three minutes, I'm going to ask you to focus all of your attention on the breath and the breath alone. During this time, you do not need to breathe a certain way. You can just let the inhales and exhales come and go naturally. The through the nose is best, through the mouth is tolerable. And in the same way, you would devote all of your attention to someone you love if they were trying to communicate something to you. See if you can devote all of your attention to focusing on the breath not only to help self-regulate your attention so that it can be stable, clear, and calm, also known as shamatha, but so that you can listen to the undiscovered and hidden parts of your mind. As is the breath, so is the mind. So when you're ready to begin, knowing that you can breathe a certain way if you need to, go ahead and focus on the breath, and the breath alone, three minutes, just breath. Every time you notice your attention wandering from the breath completely or in part, simply return to the breath exclusively, and this will help you strengthen your ability to concentrate with stability. When your mind is not wandering, try to find a balance between clarity and relaxation by sharpening your concentration during the exhales and relaxing during the inhales. One more minute.
The next technique is called Vipassana or insight meditation. And here we'll be observing the five layers of the mind, namely the body, sensations, attention, impressions, and consciousness. Specifically with the lens of asking ourselves the questions, real or unreal? To help us decipher which is which, be using the three marks of existence. The first one is called anitya, impermanence. The second one is dhoka, unsatisfying. The last one is called anatman, no self nature. So as we look at the three marks of existence with each layer of the mind, simply observe with mindfulness what arises, lingers, and passes away to see it for what it is with a non-reactive mind. So we'll begin with the shape of the body. Move your attention to the crown of your head and very slowly move your attention down from the top to the bottom, starting with your forehead, the scalp, the temples, the eyes, the nose, the lips, the teeth, palate, the ears, the tongue, jaw, the neck, the shoulders, all the way down the arms, to the palms, thumbs, and each finger to the fingertips. And move your attention down the front of your body, chest, all the ribs, the internal organs, the abdomen, the pelvis, the hips, the thighs, the knees, the shins, the ankles, and the feet all the way to the tips of your toenails. Move your attention up the back of your body through the soles towards the heels backs of the calves towards the backs of your knees, back of your thighs towards the glutes, the tailbone, the sacrum, the lower back, the upper back, the shoulder blades, the neck, the brain stem, the space behind your eyes, the medial prefrontal cortex, and the neocortex, the surface of your brain. Now, as you focus on the shape of your body with the three marks of existence in mind and permanent, it's changing, if it's impermanent, then it is real. If it brings dissatisfaction, it is real. And if it lacks the self nature of being good or bad in and of itself, then it is real. Moving on now to sensations, observe any sensation in your environment, perhaps a sound, or the silence between sounds. If your eyes are open, the shapes, colors. Perhaps olfactory, the smells, or a taste, or the sensation of touch, the feeling of heaviness, your seat on your cushion, or the air on your skin, lightness. There's also a sense of time, a sense of motion. Sensing your body in space is called proprioception. And sensing what is going on within your body in teroception. Whatever senses arise, simply use the three marks of existence, impermanent, unsatisfying, and no self nature to determine whether what you are observing is real or unreal. Now 
Now moving on to attention, Sanjnya. Notice that the window of your attention can only take in so much information per second. Though approximately 11 to the power of seven bits of information can be available to your senses, it can only take in about 16 to 50 bits per second through the window of our attention. So please place your attention on your attention, however meta that is, and notice what it's doing. Whether it is stable, clear, calm, or wandering, agitated, and dull, simply observe what is. state your attention is in. Use the three marks of existence to see if it's real or unreal. Anitya, impermanent. Dhoka, unsatisfying. And Anatman, no self-nature of being good or bad independently. Now we'll move to impressions. So impressions are the memories of every experience that we've had up to this moment. Impressions also include the genes from countless lives prior to us that shape our brains and bodies and nervous systems to the way they are. So simply observe the impressions that are arising, lingering, and passing away with the question on your mind, real or unreal? Observing thoughts without being lost in thought is a skill. Your breath can help serve as an anchor. The sensation of your body can help you observe thoughts. They come and go without being lost in them. Whether you're anticipating the future or reflecting on the past, all this activity is happening right now. Though only one thought can be in our attention with clarity at any one given time, it is reasonable to assume that millions of thoughts might be going on simultaneously, but the window of our attention only reveals a handful at a time at most. Lastly, we'll focus on Vijnana, consciousness the subject state of mind behind every observation, the sheer experience of experience itself. So you observe consciousness, become conscious of consciousness, try to do so with the lens of real or unreal, and ask yourself, is it impermanent, unsatisfying, and lacking self-nature? Though consciousness might seem to be permanent, if it allows us to experience one thing in this moment and another thing the next moment, it must be changing and therefore impermanent. Although consciousness in a way is pure, it alone cannot produce the satisfaction that we seek. Even it can be 
colored by the impressions that serve as the lens through which we observe everything externally and internally. And therefore consciousness lacks the self nature of being good in and of itself or bad in and of itself. So we do not see the world as it is, rather we see the world as we are. And the practice of the Pashana is the practice to return to reality. And instead of trying to rearrange the furniture of the world around us, seeking satisfaction, to instead work with the impressions of our mind to see things more clearly and use the limited time and energy that we have to do the most good we can for ourselves and others and avoid all forms of harm to prevent suffering. So the last technique that we'll work on today is called Meta, or loving kindness meditation. For Meta meditation, consider laying down so that you're as comfortable as possible. You can put your cushion or bolster underneath your knees. Maybe even cover yourself with a blanket. But allow your body to once again settle into stillness. And for the next minute, try to surround your entire body with the vibrations of compassion, gratitude, and loving kindness. If you have a hard time summoning these feelings from thought alone, think of someone that you find easy to love and let that feeling broaden and build to fill up your entire body. If you build this feeling, it may only last a microsecond, but if you summon it again and again and again, it can become very powerful and fill up your entire attention. One of my favorite quotes from the Four Agreements is, happiness is the result of the love coming from you in the present moment. Happiness is the result of the love coming from you in the present moment. So for the next minute, try to send these waves of compassion, gratitude, and kindness to all the people that come to mind, your family, your friends. Give yourself a minute to wish them good health, success, well-being, resilience. This feeling can expand well beyond the shape of your body to fill up the room or to fill up all of space itself. So consider extending these positive vibrations, kindness and compassion, gratitude, with resilience to all of your neighbors, people that you barely know. Maybe even people that you have a hard time with. You can secretly wish them happiness, freedom from suffering, without them ever knowing. You can even wish this upon all living beings, all species. The only limit is your imagination. In Meta meditation, it is possible 
once you get the, the feeling to become powerful and self-sustaining, to experience ecstatic states where you step outside of your ordinary sense of self and see yourself in all beings, all beings within the self. For now, please return your attention back to the shape of your body, to the sensations around and within you, to the window of your attention, which you can help regulate with the help of your breathing, and to the impressions of your mind as they currently are. As well as to the subject state of mind, consciousness, behind every observation. See if you can make consciousness your home, giving you the perspective to see the impressions, what your attention is doing, the sensations and the shape of your body, so that you can be mindful of these layers of your mind throughout the day. So that you can prevent future suffering and instead cultivate as much well-being for yourself and others. Please take your time to resume movement, your fingers and toes, and find your way back up to a comfortable seat. Thank you for taking the time to practice meditation. These three techniques are a trifecta, mindfulness of breathing, vipassana, and metta. They balance each other out very well. May you overcome all the obstacles and experience the benefits, so much so that you want to share them with others. Namaste.